What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and today we're going to be talking about open broadcast systems, but not OBS, not Streamlabs OBS, not Ecamm. We're going to talk about something that for a lot of people might save your streaming careers. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, once again, my name is Cleveland Terry and if you're new here, please hang out. This is what we do. We talk about tech, we talk about gear reviews, we talk about DJ related stuff, and we talk about streaming media because now that is the hot topic. So there's a lot of other streaming tutorials in this playlist right here. So make sure you check out this playlist if you wanna learn all you can about streaming. But I can't tell you how many times over the last couple of weeks, people have asked me, hey, my computer won't run this. My computer can't run OBS. My computer is too old. Are there any alternatives? And the quick answer is, of course there are. They're just not advertised like OBS is advertised or like Streamlabs is advertised or if you're on a PC like vMix or any of those other super, which are, they're all fantastic applications, but for a lot of people, they just don't have the, the horsepower in their computers to be able to run them. So if you don't have a computer that's strong enough, powerful enough to run some of these native programs, then we're gonna have to change to a web-based program. Now, there are a couple of applications out there that I utilize, I've used, I've tested. I'm very confident that you will actually have a great time using. One of them is StreamYards, and the other one is Restream. Yes, that's right, Restream, the company that allows you to broadcast to multiple platforms at one time also has their own broadcast system built right into Restream. A lot of people don't know that. Now, the good thing about using a browser-based system is it takes all of the pressure off of your computer. Specifically, the server that the application is on, they do all the heavy lifting, which means you don't have to have a super heavy duper, <laughs> duper, super heavy duty computer to run these things. You can run these things off of basic stuff and you'll probably be just fine. Now, some of the caveats are for something like this, when it's doing as much as it is on the back end and not coming from you, typically speaking, there are charges. So yes, these are not free applications. There are monthly fees associated with them. However, they do have freemium options. It means you can use them, but typically they have their own branding on it, or maybe they only allow you to, to use the application for a limited time before it turns off. And this is no different. However, for most people, that just want to stream. This may be all you need. And by the way, when I talk about StreamYards and I talk about Restream, if you look at them, they are virtually identical. They both basically do the same thing. Not only do they do the same thing, but they look very, very similar. So if you're using the freemium side of any one of these products, you're very limited. Maybe you only get 20 hours of streaming time. You have to use their branding. Uh, you aren't able to record your stream after it's done. It doesn't save your stream in the cloud. So these are some options that you're going to lose by going freemium. But for a lot of people, that's all they need. Also, the freemium apps do give you the ability to bring on guests via their links so you can bring them on super, super easy. Now, this was the reason that I even looked at any of these products. I was trying to do an interview and I was looking at all the alternatives. So you have Ecamm, which uses Skype. You have OBS, which uses, you know, video shares and, and discords and all of these things. And I didn't love any of them because they all required a certain amount of bandwidth and a certain amount of resources in order to run them properly. When I was in Ecamm and I brought in my Skype caller, my computer took a huge hit. So I was moving super slow. The, the, the guest was fine, but I personally was moving slow. I didn't like that. I didn't like the fluidness, not to mention a lot of people don't use Skype anymore. It's still a business application. I use it all the time. Anytime someone corporate calls me and says, hey, let's Skype, that's the only option. They don't say let's Zoom or let's do this. Skype is the only thing they bring up. So I always use Skype, but a lot of your regular people, they're used to using Zoom and Google chat, things that you don't have to install an app to use. I mean, you can send somebody a link with Zoom and they'll be able to click that link and get on. So it doesn't get much easier than that, which is why Zoom is so popular because it's easy. StreamYards and Restream, 
make the chat super, super easy. The same system applies. If you wanna bring somebody in, you hit the invite link, and then you take that link, you copy it into a message, send it to them, email, whatever, they get access to it, they click on the link, and they're on, like that. It does not get any easier than that. Wonderland Events asked any comments on Bigo. Bigo's yes, ugly. I yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I know there are people that are making money on Bigo. Unique skill in there Bigo. Is a, yeah, I know that there's a huge fan base on Bigo, but I downloaded that app and I yeah. hated every second I was on that app. <laughs> I felt like I was in the dirtiest, cheapest <sighs> casino in Vegas <laughs> off the strip. Everything is just lights and emo. It was, you know what it's like? It's like going back to like 1998 and like being on MySpace. You were, you and were, you like, were, you were in Henderson <laughs> at the Henderson yeah, Casino. Yeah. I was, ex ex exactly. But Another benefit to StreamYard is they do have this private chat function. Now, you have your normal chat, which by the way, will allow you to bring in anybody that you're streaming to. So if you're streaming to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, you can bring all of those chats into one stream and you can highlight comments. Highlighting comments is a very, very cool thing to do. It makes people feel like they're a part of the conversation and you highlighting their comment makes them feel like, hey, I'm contributing to this entire thing. And it just adds another element to make your stream a little more dynamic. But one of the things that StreamYard does versus Restream is there's a private chat. So let's say for instance, you, you've invited some people in and they're in the chat, but you haven't brought them onto the stream yet, but they're sitting there and waiting. You can send a private chat to them saying, hey guys, you know, give me three more minutes and then we're gonna get on. Let's, we're gonna talk about this, blah, blah, blah. And then the stream doesn't see that. Now, of course you could text them and you can do all that stuff, but it's so much easier to do it right on, right on the stream. You're already there anyway. With the freemium, you get up to six participants. Six participants alone, that is so many people. In both of the applications, you have the ability to put down kind of these banner overlays. So if there's something important you wanna talk about or you wanna introduce somebody that you're interviewing and you wanna put their name down, you can do that in the banners. And those are unlimited to what you can do. The difference is StreamYards has a ticker version of the banner overlay. So for instance, when I have a morning show and I say, you know, wake up in Cleveland, I can put that on a ticker and it just keeps looping the entire time right at the bottom of the stream, makes it super, super easy. StreamYards has definitely has a good footing and even though they pretty much do the same thing, some of the things that they offer are kind of cool. Like on the stream, it will actually show you your viewer count right on the main window. Restream does not do that. Now, as far as pricing is concerned, they're both pretty close, but there are some key differences. For Restream, it's $19.99. For StreamYard, it's $25 flat. Now, I'm only talking about monthly fees, not yearly where you receive additional discounts because nobody ever does that. We're only talking about monthly. So the key differences are, they do a lot of the same things, but one of the big differences between Restream and StreamYard is once you move up to the premium at $19.99, you're still limited in what you can do versus what StreamYards can do at $25. In 1999, it gives you the ability to finally stream to Facebook pages, just like with the normal restream, you get your, your Facebook pages and then your one custom destination. Uh, it allows you to record your stream. However, you still can't update your graphics. You have to use the restream branding, similar to the way it is right now. If you pay $19.99 for restream, you know that when you send out a post, it says restream in the beginning of it. And that's their branding. So you don't get to remove the branding until you move up to their top tier account. But at $25 with StreamYards, you get access to everything. You get access to customizing your layout, customizing your branding, and your ability to, to add your own video clips in. Those are all limited to about 30 seconds, but you do have the option. The difference is Restream also gives you the ability to play local videos. So videos from your computer, if they're on there, you can pull those up and play those directly into your stream. There is nothing like that on StreamYard as of yet. Both of them allow you the ability to 
record your streams after you're done. And not only can you record the visual and the audio, but if you wanna just record the audio, you can do that also. All of these things are available to you without any additional charge. Now, both of these at $19.99 and $25 has a maximum resolution of 720p. You can't go any higher than 720p. And for most people, that's okay. But if you wanna move to 1080p, then you gotta move to the higher price points. Now, they're both exactly $49.99 at that price point. So what is the difference between the two? Well, you get access to StreamYards where they will allow for multi-streaming of three people on the second tier and then up to eight people on the third tier, where in Restream, you get access to 30 different streams right off the bat. There is no delineation with pricing. You just get that. The difference is you get more recording time and you get more people on your stream. Also, one of the differences that I forgot, at least on Restream, doesn't it doesn't really spec this out on StreamYards. The time difference when you get a message to when it actually populates onto your stream is different based upon price points. So when it's free, there is a 15 second delay. Anytime somebody leaves a comment, 15 seconds has to go by and then it will finally populate on your stream. However, once you start paying for it, there's only a five second delay. It doesn't hurt to pay for it, especially if you wanna be talking to people in real time. And I've always thought Restream has done a really good job with their chat system. I've never had any issues with their chat system. It's always been, been great. Now, there is a big difference between Restream and StreamYards. And the big difference is Restream allows for RTMP polls. What does that mean? Well, that means that you have access to three different private stream keys that allows you to basically use them as optional feeds. Let's say you were using OBS and then you had a couple different feeds for different offsite things that you wanted to incorporate into your stream. Well, with these pull keys, you're able to do that. And I, there's nothing on StreamYards that is even close to doing that. I know probably one of the things you're thinking is like, wow, $49 a month is pretty expensive. And it can be, but if you start doing the math for whether or not you're gonna buy some brand new A10 Mini Pro or a brand new computer, you do the math, it might be a better option for you. Plus, they're gonna continue to make upgrades to the system. Whereas once you buy your one thing, that's as far as you're going. It's a convenient thing. Uh, I can take my computer and I can stream from anywhere. As a matter of fact, you can use it. It's it's essentially like a Zoom meets OBS on steroids because I can take my computer and I can open it up and I can stream right off my computer just like that, anywhere, anywhere. And as a matter of fact, I believe I can use even my iPad. So I can actually have a perfectly good feed, a perfectly good stream right from here. Just so you know that you can control your StreamYard or your Restream right from your computer. So even if you're running a Restream off of a computer, it doesn't have to be near you. You can open up your iPad and you can still operate the entire thing like you were using your computer. I know the question is gonna be, which one do you like better? And to be honest with you, I like different things at different times. Like I like the fact that there is a ticker on the bottom in StreamYard, it just, I don't know, it just adds a kind of a professional effect to it. Is it a big deal? No, because Restream has their version of it. They allow for two tiers of text. So I can say weekdays in Cleveland, and then I can say it's weekday mornings right at the bottom. So there's just a different approach and a different way of doing it, but they're still very similar and they still do the same things. So the key issue is what makes the most sense for you? So because they do the same thing, because the output and everything is the same, brass tacks here. Financially speaking, I like the fact that at $25 versus $19.99, you get access to everything on StreamYards. You don't get access to everything on Restream. That alone is gonna deter people from using Restream versus using StreamYards. But if you are already gonna spend the $49.99, okay, on either one of these platforms. I think that Restream is a better option at the $49 price form because of the pull links, because of the fact that, you know, Restream and their chat system has been 
well established and they do a great job with it. Now, here's a caveat. I was going to spend the $49 and then I looked into my emails and there was a lifetime restream discount on one of my emails. I just clicked onto that and it brought down my price to $33. So now I'm spending $33 for the $49 one. That's a win for me. That's a win. I'm okay with spending that money. So I, I like them both. I like one for one point and I like the other for another point, but you can't go wrong with either one of them at all. All right, guys, that is it for me. If you found what I said here useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said here really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. Guys, always a pleasure. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace.